All right, so the Bosch BMI 270 Gyro, you're seeing more and more on flight controllers. It seems like it's probably gonna be the new standard for gyro you see on your flight controllers. Just doing a simple search on the three most popular sites in the United States, you can see how many flight controllers are being shipped with 270 gyros nowadays. Here on GetFPV is the same, and then finally Pyrodrone. But what do we historically know about this gyro? It's a different manufacturer to the brand of gyros that you would typically find on your legacy flight controllers or existing stock of flight controllers. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the BMI 270, talk about some of its attributes and some hidden settings that you might be, wanna be aware of in Betaflight. So the typical gyros that have been on our flight controllers were invented by TDK. They used to be called Invensense, and then TDK is the new brand. I don't know if they got bought out or whatnot. But for a long time, your MPU 6000s and your ICM gyros, those were the ones that we've been using. Again, those are TDK branded gyros. You can even see on their promotional materials here, they have a drone and amongst other things. These are the gyros that, you know, that are in your cell phone. You know, We're basically no part of their meaningful market but gyroscopes are in lots of things, uh, including drums. Now, the other major manufacturer of gyros is Bosch, and you can see there in their illustration, also using a drone. Uh, VR headsets, your Wii controllers, cell phones, things of that nature. Again, another major manufacturer. The BMI series of gyros classically was the 160. So Radix Brain FPV used to use the 160 gyro uh, from Bosch. They were the only one for a long time until about this year. Uh, net, but now you're seeing that the Radex V2 and then a bunch of other manufacturers have switched over for flight controllers have switched over to start using the BMI 270. So I don't see anybody out there using the Bosch BMI 160 anymore, probably for some good reasons, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the 270 uh, is used in the Radex V2 and also a bunch of flight controllers, as I showed there, be from iFlight to SpeedyB, the Mamba flight controller, so on and so forth, are starting to switch over, it seems, to using the BMI 270. Now, in today's chip shortage world, I don't know why the switch is being made. It could be financial benefit, or they just can't get the TDK gyros anymore. I'm not really sure. But is this a good or a bad thing? Is switching to Bosch BMI because they're cheaper? So that's why people are switching over. Is it because they can't get them, but they really want the TDK? Uh, or is it just they're better gyros? So let's look at these in a little bit more depth. Behind me is a plot where we measured on the same quad, two different flights though, and the one had a TDK gyro on it, and the second, the Bosch BMI. So it was two different flight controllers, basically had one switched over to a new flight controller, and then those had two different gyros on it. So there are a bunch of variables there, but uh, let's look at some of the differences we see switching from a TDK gyro to a Bosch gyro on at least the same quad, just flipping out the flight, flight controller. And if you are interested in a more thorough test, I'm gonna follow up to this in a Patreon only video, where I'm gonna put a flight controller with an MPU 6000 and a flight controller with a Bosch BMI 270 on the exact same quad, fly it, and let's we'll have a more thorough comparison between the two. Again, check out the Patreon if you're interested in that. I'm gonna do a follow-up video this week showing those results. But for now, on this flight, what we're seeing here is what we really want is focus in on this area here between the 100 to 300 Hertz, and you can see the two difference. So the one with the BMI 270 in normal mode, which we'll talk about that in a second, and this 004 log here, that was with a, a TDK gyro. I think it was with the TDK 2689, which uh, there's some mixed reviews on that, but nevertheless, we can see the different results on this. Uh, this basically we want this line in this area to be as low as possible and you can see that the Bosch BMI 270 uh, is doing a little bit better it's a little bit lower noise floor uh, in this 100 to 200 hertz range and that's where you'll get the shakes and jitters and really the stuff that you don't want to see in, in flight performance and then you know everything further out on this is you know comparable the same and then it, it really gets filtered out anyways again this is the raw noise we're not doing any beta flight filtering on this stuff. So bottom line is based on that result, it's not like moving to the Bosch was a bad thing. It's actually a little bit better. Now, again, I'm gonna do some follow-up testing this week on that. And if you're interested in that, check out the link below. 
Now, the other thing you should be aware of that the Bosch BMI 270 actually has some additional options. Uh, if you go into the CLI and Betaflight, there's some low pass filter stuff in the hardware of the gyro itself that you can adjust and tweak. Whether you want to tweak that or not, I think it's fine in the normal mode, but let's take a look at that so you're at least aware of what these settings are and where you can find them. So if we connect to Betaflight to a flight controller with a BMI 270 and we go into the CLI, we can type in get gyro and then it will list a bunch of the commands that have to deal with gyroscopes. Uh, if we go to the very top, you can see on here, there's this gyro low pass filter normal. And in that there is actually some options that you can select and change. So you have this normal option one and option two, and that is gonna go ahead and adjust the low pass filter within the Bosch gyro. That's a new option that was not available really in the TDKs. On the TDKs, it was really, you had the normal mode and then some crazy high filter mode that really moved up some low, this low pass filter that was in these those gyros that was really much unusable. So it really wasn't an option. So that's all well and good, but what do these options do? Well, in the normal mode, which is the default for beta flight, it puts the low pass filter for the BMI 270 down around 300 Hertz, which is the typical behavior we would have saw in the TDK gyro. So when you get like a, a MPU 6000 gyro or an ICM 2689, it's kind of the classic gyroscopes that use in flight controllers those low pass filters in theirs were set around 250 Hertz. In the Bosch, you have the option to set it around 300 Hertz. So you get similar results. So that is again, the default, but there is options in the Bosch to move that up to 550 or 750 Hertz cutoff. Um, that would be the option one and option two. So again, normal mode, which is the default for beta flight, will have the low pass filter cutoff within the gyro chip itself at around 300 Hertz. And then option one is at 550 Hertz and option two, 750 Hertz. So what we did in this test is put an old Radix flight controller that had the BMI 160 gyro on it. And then it put another flight controller in the exact same quad and did a flight and captured logging data at the exact same. So it's the exact same flight for the data. Then the second flight controller had the BMI 270. So this is a BMI 160 versus a BMI 270. And in here, you can see I have option two selected for the BMI 270. So that's not the default. And you can see you get similar behavior to the 160, the older Bosch gyro uh, in its filter attenuation. Basically just look, these two lines basically kind of match each other. You can see the difference. Um, notice that the 270 again has this kind of this lower noise floor in this area here and a little, just a little bit in these uh, kind of these control frequencies. And then the high pass or the, you know, uh, frequencies up here where it's, you know, a thousand shakes, little shakes per second. You know, this is talking about 150 little shakes per second. That's what this frequency in Hertz means. Um, you can see that's kind of the same. So Bosch BMI 270 in option two is gonna give you about the same performance or same cutoff uh, characteristics that you would have got in the old BMI 160. Now do look on here, and this is a characteristics I see as well. This was kind of a negative characteristic of the uh, 160s. You always got this spike at 150 Hertz, right where it's cut off of its low pass filter were. And that, um, if you know anything about filtering, that's, that's a that's a sign of that's where the cutoff is. Sometimes they amplify noise right at the cutoff frequency, depending on your filter setup. And you can see that's a characteristic that's showing there on the pitch and yaw axis, where the 270 is not showing that. So this is definitely an upgrade from the 160. Now on this next one here, it's again same thing. You can see the characteristics of all of this, but now this is in OSR2 mode, which is option one in the CLI. So we're going from option two to option one. And then the next thing we're going to show you is normal. And you can see everything's about the same as before. Again, the 270, again, that lower noise floor is there again, but you can see how the filter frequencies, it's kind of filtering this noise out, um, these vibrations down here. And then if we go to normal mode, which is the default in beta flight. So now this is 270 and normal. And then again, comparing it against that, uh, BMI 160, how you can see how it's, you know, definitely that low pass filter is kind of moving back. And now the cutoffs here at 300 Hertz, where before it's at 550 around here. And then at 750 up here, it's just doing a lot less filtering. 
So you can kind of see that uh, as you move from option two to option one to normal mode, which is the default, then you can see the characteristics and how it's changing there. So I would be remiss without thanking Chris Rosser for this edition of those options, option one, option two, and actually getting the default switched to have a little bit uh, more filtering in the BMI 270, which I think is better for the default. Um, just big thanks to him for doing it and a, more of a big thanks for the amount of grief he got to get this process through. I mean, there's, there's quite a bit of pushback, which I don't think was really necessary. And I know doing PRs, it takes a lot to get through that. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's good for the project because things are looked at, but it does get tough to follow it through. I've been there, done that before. Now, one thing you should be aware of is that the Brain Radix V2 flight controller does not have that normal low pass filter cutoff move down on the BMI 270. Everybody else does, but Brain has elected to put that a little higher uh, or basically mimic what they saw in the 160. Uh, they made a statement, as you can see here on their upgrade, they actually fork Betaflight, so I mean they copy it and they change stuff and then put that on their own flight controller, which is totally legit, everybody can do that. So do be aware of that, that, that little bit of a difference. So basically their argument is that you don't need to move that internal low pass filter down on the 270, that the other filters in Betaflight, the RPM filter, the dynamic notches, and then just the low passes that are on the sliders in Betaflight, take care of that high frequency noise, so you, there's no need to move it down. Uh, so let's see what the, if that holds true. So like in the previous plot, this is one where we have the BMI 160 here. This is the pre-filtered data and you can see a lot of noise uh, and energy up here, intensity. And then this is the 270 in normal mode, the beta flight default. And that's kind of crushed down by the internal low pass filter. But the question is what happens after the filtering? So to take a look at that, we can just click on and look at just gyro, not pre-filtered and hit run on that. And you can see that they're not incorrect in that statement that most of the noise from that was in the 160, uh, the BMI 160 gyro is crushed down by the filtering. This is the exact same filtering on both. I have it mimicked that the uh, there. Now you can see that that resonance peak that's in the 160 is still there. Um, I have the dynamic filter turned off, so there's no notches going to go and jump on this. Uh, cause I want to dynamic filter moves around. So that could move around differently on both. So I made all the low passes in beta flight, just static. And you can see that, uh, that still comes through. Uh, so maybe a dy the dynamic filter may jump on that. If you have max high enough that it can get to it, but yeah, you can see there's a little bit higher energy, um, coming through from the BMI, even with the beta flight filters. And their argument is that uh, you're adding delay to the signal by having that low pass internal um, be a little lower inside. And again, they're not incorrect, but my counter argument, there's no difference to that than is if you want to get equivalent to that, just go into beta flight and just move up your slider right here. So then that will do a little bit less filtering in beta flight since you have the filtering in the internal hardware low pass. It will reduce the delay of this filtering instead of reducing the delay in that filtering. And then it will let a little bit more noise through to kind of get you equivalent. Six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. It's a trade-off. Either you're filtering it in the gyro and the hardware low pass or filtering it in the beta flight. So what's my final thoughts on the BMI 270, this new gyro chip of newer to other flight co controller manufacturers out there? I think it's a good thing. Everything I've seen from the 270 looks positive. That lower noise floor, which we're gonna do some more testing on here this week. Again, if you're interested in checking that out, get on the Patreon. That's gonna be a Patreon only video, but I think it's good in general. Uh, everything I've seen out of it is an improvement over the TDK so far. I don't see anything negative about it thus far. So if you're out there purchasing a flight controller, definitely take a look at and consider a Bosch BMI 270 gyro. On the, flip, on the flip side of that, I don't think the BMI 160 was all that great. It was okay. I think that did have some lower noise floor characteristics as well, but that spike that was way out there, um, yeah, you know, it, was, it was, you know, half, you know, a little bit better here, a little bit worse on there. Um, but nevertheless, I think it was okay. But uh, this 270, I think doesn't, you know, doesn't have that spike characteristic. And I'm seeing everything I've seen so far is have a no, lower noise floor so far, at least. Okay, well, that's it. That will wrap this up. Hopefully you found that helpful. And now you know 
all about this new 270 gyro. So when you see that on flight controllers, you know, I wouldn't be afraid of it. Maybe you want to even seek it out. If you're, again, if you're interested in more details, check out the links below. Thanks, everybody. I hope this helps.